In this segment, we're going to talk about the prescriptive requirements. Now, this is section 402, the building thermal envelope, and we're going to be looking at general requirements, specific installation requirements, as well as demonstration. Now let's take a look at the table for section 402.11, and this is probably one of the most used tables in the code because a lot of the, the construction is prescriptive, and so this tells us what the R values of floors, walls, ceilings, windows, uh, U factors, and so forth need to be. Now remember we're in climate zone 4, and so we're looking first of all at the U factor can be no more than 0.35, and there are some exceptions to that, we'll talk later. Um, the skylight can be no more than a U factor 0.60, uh, there's no requirement for solar heat gain coefficient on the glass. The ceiling R value can be no less than 38. Uh, wood frame walls no less than R13. Mass walls, uh, if the insulation is on the outside uh, of the wall, 50% or more is on the outside, it can be R5. If less than 50%, uh, that has to be R10. Um, and then, of course, the floor R values are 19. Basement wall insulation is uh, R10 for continuous insulation like foam. R13 required for, um, you know, uh, framed cavity insulation. The slab R value in depth is R10 to 2 feet. And then the uh, crawl space R value insulation is either 10 continuous or R13 if it's uh, cavity type insulation. This table shows us how Kentucky differs in terms of the requirements uh, from the 2009 IECC versus what Kentucky adopted. And there's only one major change, and that's the basement insulation depth only needs to go to the frost line instead of the full depth of the basement wall. So that's the only predominant change. Now, the other uh, table that you might want to become familiar with, this is alternative U factor table. And again, um, this is most relevant for use with ResCheck software, um, but also if you're using advanced framing or SIPs or some unique type of uh, framing system uh, that the R value table doesn't apply to, this is where you'd use the alternative U factor, uh, as well as if you're doing uh, the total U factor for the entire uh, uh, structure alternative. In this next series of slides, we'll talk about some examples of poorly installed insulation. I can't emphasize enough the importance of getting insulation installed right. In the past versions of the code, there really wasn't much language around it. In this version of the code, they really want to make sure that insulation is installed right, so incumbent upon us as inspectors, builders, and people in the industry to recognize the importance that getting the insulation installed right has on the overall performance of thermal envelope. One of the big issues with millions of homes out there today, the insulation was so poorly installed that it doesn't work well. Uh, when you compress insulation, it loses its ability to trap air. When you have gaps and cracks, it allows air to infiltrate through it. So the really effective R value of that insulation is much lower than what we're paying for. So this version of the code is really trying to address that and give empower code officials with the ability to fail jobs that aren't properly installed. So for example here, we want to make sure the insulation is cut to fit around wiring and so forth. In this example, um, the insulation is crammed behind this electrical box and it's clearly not the right way to do it. You would want to cut the insulation to fit around the box so some of the insulation was behind the box and then the insulation uh, that was cut around the box would more perfectly fit. Um, here we're seeing that the insulation doesn't fully come out and fill the cavity. It's important that the cavity be filled and the insulation be cut around the outlets. Here we can see a typical insulation job where the insulation is really compressed. And uh, so it's not going to work well. This is a cross section of how when insulation is installed improperly, we don't get the full R value. We may get R13 in the center, but we certainly don't get it anywhere near the edges. Here's an example of insulation that's compressed and just crammed in, the, in this cavity. Um, the problem is it just wasn't cut to fit. Uh, here's an example of insulation that doesn't come in contact uh, with the lower plate. So these gaps are there and that's not what we want. We do not want gaps around the insulation. Here's a better insulation job. Notice um, in this slide how the insulation is in full contact with the upper and lower plates. It's in contact with both sides of the studs all the way up to the entire height of the cavity. Uh, the insulation is perfectly installed. That's really what we're looking for. Now this is what happens to the R value of insulation uh, when we have lots of voids. If you can see here that you know we could easily start out with an R19, but if we have a high percentage of voids in the insulation, its R value is easily cut in half. Also, knee walls have to have uh, proper insulation. Uh, it's also a good idea to incorporate air barriers on both sides of the knee wall so we don't have any exposed uh, insulation. 
Um, and oftentimes where the building envelopes start and stop, it can be deceiving. So we want to make sure we understand the difference between conditioned space and unconditioned space for every building so that we make sure that the adequate insulation is done.